Hey everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and in today's video, I have four meal prep recipes for you. They are all easy, healthy, and delicious. As always, feel free to skip down to the recipe that you want to see. Now, why should you meal prep? You have been watching me do these meal prep sessions for a while now, and I have to say, meal prep has changed my life. First of all, it is cheaper than going out to eat. What if you don't have a breakfast for the morning? You go out to a restaurant or something and grab a sandwich. Nothing wrong with that, but if you do that every single day, that's really gonna put a damper on your budget. So that's why I do some sort of a breakfast meal prep every single week. Meal prep can also be healthier for you. If you're not a huge fan of preparing vegetables and stuff for dinner, doing it ahead of time makes it more likely that you'll actually use it. So there have been plenty of times where I bought some vegetables like uh, lettuce or bell peppers or something, and I planned on using it for dinner, but then I never got around to chopping it up, so then it just went to waste. But when you do it ahead of time, you're more likely to use it, which actually reduces food waste, and you're also getting all those nutrients in your body. And lastly, meal prep can help save you time, which in addition will also help you save money and also make it healthier for you. So going back to breakfast as an example, let's say you make a baked oatmeal for the week and you have it in the fridge, you pull it out that morning and then you stick it in the microwave and eat it. There is really no effort involved. You didn't have to scramble up some eggs. You didn't have to get out all the ingredients for oatmeal and heat that up in the microwave. It's already there. So that saves you so much time in the morning. And the same thing can be said for dinner as well, which is why I have a couple of them in this video too. Now I was lucky enough to find ground beef on sale. The 96% lean for like 250 or something per pound. It was an amazing deal. So when you see really good deals on meat like that, I suggest you buy it, maybe even just freeze it for later. That way you can get them out and do a meal prep session. Also using what you have on hand can help you save money. So I had the meat in the freezer and I also had a couple packages of like rice in the pantry, some stuff in the freezer. So when you use what you have, that's going to help you save money. Now included at the end of each of these recipes is the total price that I paid plus the price per serving and then the nutrition info for each one and then any recipes that I have will be in the description below. So why don't we go ahead and get into the recipes. My first meal prep recipe will be a beef stroganoff. So let me show you what this beef looks like. I have two of these packages actually. This is 96% lean ground beef. I stuck them in the freezer and this one has been thawing for a little bit, but it's still partially frozen, which is fine because I'm just gonna be cooking it here. It says 520, but thanks to the Flash Food app, I got it for like 260 or something like that. So you just cook the ground beef along with some of the seasonings, the onion, cook the pasta on the side while that is going. And then I have some frozen broccoli that we will serve along with it. So first thing we gotta do is get water boiling for the pasta and then start cooking the beef. Now I know with stroganoff, you can use different kinds of meat. Some people use like actual beef tips or something like that. I've always just made mine with ground meat, whether it is ground beef or ground turkey. But really you can use whatever you want. This is still a little bit more frozen than I anticipated, but it's okay. I got it out overnight even. <laughs> like typically when it comes to dinner, I always forget to get out the meat until the morning of. And I actually remembered last night and it's still mostly frozen, but it's okay. While that is thawing a little bit, let's chop up the onion. I bought some mushrooms to go in this as well. So a lot of people can also use like cream of mushroom soup. And I've done that before too, while making stroganoff. But for some reason, you know, just making your own little sauce to go with it, it tastes a whole lot better than the cream of mushroom soup. Not that, you know, it's, a, it's bad to use that can or anything, but for me, it just tastes a whole lot better. If you're short on time though, definitely use that can of soup. I'm also supposed to use garlic in this recipe, but I uh, ran out of garlic. I have to go to the store later this week and get some. So instead, I'm just using garlic powder. And as far as the mushrooms go, this package that's up here, these are pre-washed and pre-sliced. 
which it can sometimes cost a little bit more that way, but it also saves me a lot of time. And sometimes you just have to ask yourself, do you want to save time or do you want to save money this week? And neither answer is correct or wrong. It just depends on what is going on with your week. Sometimes I have some extra money that I can use to help uh, save time on stuff. Other times my budget is really low and we'll have to buy things that will save money. I didn't need the entire box of pasta, so I just measured about five-ish servings. Um, this will serve four, but Allison likes plain pasta, so I'm just going to add five and then take out a little bit for her for later. Since this is 96% lean beef, there's really nothing to drain from it. So I'm gonna call that good, and now I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flour to it to get it to thicken up a little bit. I'm also going to add the seasonings and sauces, like a little bit of Dijon mustard. I have some Worcestershire sauce, and I have my garlic powder and paprika. Now, I'm not measuring it. It's just like a table or a teaspoon or two of each of these. Next up, I'm adding a bouillon cube as well as a cup and a half of water. Now this was a chicken bouillon cube. You can use a beef one if you want, or if you have any beef broth, you can use that instead. But this will come to a boil. I'll let it boil and simmer for a little bit. And then once that's done, we can add in the Greek yogurt. What I need to do now is take this off of the heat. I need to let it sit for a couple minutes before I add the Greek yogurt. Now, you can use either Greek yogurt or sour cream. Um, I didn't have any sour cream, uh, but I always have Greek yogurt. This has been sitting out ever since this has been um, cooking. Just to let it get to kind of room temperature. You don't want it to be boiling hot when you add this in. Sometimes it can curdle. So let's wait a couple of minutes and then we'll add this in, mix it together, and then we'll be good to go. While this was finishing up, I had two bags of frozen broccoli in the microwave. Frozen vegetables are amazing for really quick side items. And as you can see, I used rigatoni for my pasta, but you can use whatever pasta you want. I made this into four containers. I had put the pasta first and then the stroganoff mixture, and then I added the broccoli. So I will have the nutrition info right here. And the total cost for this was $9.15. I think three of it was from the mushrooms. So if you can find the mushrooms cheaper, that will definitely save you some money. But that equals to about $2.28 per serving, which is not bad for a quick dinner or a quick lunch. The next dinner I'm going to make is a taco style meatball. I have never made that kind before. Usually when I make meatballs, it's like Italian meatballs. So I just got out a whole bunch of different seasonings from my pantry. I started with the pound or so of the ground beef, and then I added an egg, and then a couple of different spices. So I know there is like 
cumin and chili powder, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. If I had had like a packet of taco seasoning, I would have done that as well or would have done that instead. And I added some jalapenos for a little bit of spice. I didn't have any fresh ones. Now, here's what I saw somewhere where instead of using breadcrumbs, you could use crushed up tortilla chips. And I had the, some of the Tostitos hint of lime. Oh my gosh. I put them into a sandwich bag and crushed them up before adding them in. I probably could have crushed them a little bit more finely, but they worked for what it was. And then you just add it to the mixture like you would breadcrumbs. And then you mix it all together until it is fully combined. I preheated the oven to 400 and I sprayed a baking sheet with cooking spray. Now I'm using a cookie scoop here to get the meatballs like somewhat even. And then I went ahead and rolled them into balls just to make them actually look like meatballs. These were smaller ones. So I stuck them in for about fifth, I think it was like 15 minutes, maybe 12 or 15 or so. And they were done right after that. Now, the side item I am using is from Mr. Max, actually. This is the Nor pot or rice side, the Power Rice Blend. So it had quinoa and some beans in it too. It was all seasoned. And this was really easy. You just pour it into the pot. I added some olive oil, like it said, and then some water. And then I let it boil and cook. This actually, you know, the serving size said it was the entire bag, but I only split it up into two portions. The meatballs themselves were serving four, I believe. So the next day I just made up a couple more batches of rice to go in the other ones. Now meatballs, at least these ones, I needed them to be about 165 or so. So after 12 to 15 minutes, they were completely done. I put about six into each of these containers and then filled it with the rice. And then as far as the vegetables go, when I went to Meijer that, that day, I found a bag of Brussels sprouts marked down. And I don't know if Brussels sprouts really go with like a taco style meal, but I, I did something with what was on sale. I made do with what I had. It was actually not too bad. The total price for this was $5.75, which made it $1.43 per serving. Now, slow cooker oatmeal, you really need to make sure that you spray the inside of your slow cooker very, very well because it will definitely stick. I have done that many times before and oatmeal does stick so easily in this. Now, steel cut oats. This is what I'm gonna be using for this oatmeal. And the reasoning is because steel cut oats tend to uh, keep their consistency when they are cooked for long periods of time. When you use rolled oats and oatmeal like this in the slow cooker, it tends to get really mushy. So that's why I am using the steel cut oats because they tend to keep their form better. Now here is what the steel cut oats look like. As you can see, they're a lot smaller, they are thicker, so they cook a lot easier and tend to um, hold their form. Now this oatmeal is going to be a cinnamon style oatmeal. The recipe that I'm using, it is like a cinnamon roll style oatmeal. So you make it just like this, but then there's also a cream cheese style topping you can put on it. I'm choosing not to do that just because I don't want it. So I'm just gonna put the oatmeal ingredients in here. So this was two cups of steel cut oats, and then I'm gonna use eight cups of water. Now, as you can tell, eight cups of water for two cups of oats, it is definitely a lot. Steel cut oats use or absorb a lot more liquid than rolled oats do. And then from here, it's just some seasonings. I've got some cinnamon here. It's probably a little over a teaspoon, but there was only a little bit left in there. And then you just need about a fourth teaspoon of salt and then a fourth cup of brown sugar. 
And then when it comes time to actually eating the oatmeal, if you want it a little bit sweeter, you can obviously add a little bit more to it when you're ready to eat. All right, now, the, what I'm using right here is my Instant Pot. Somebody told me, um, I made a slow cooker recipe a while ago, and they said, you know, you need to make sure that you tell the people to use the slow cooker function and not the Instant Pot function. So while this is my Instant Pot, I am using the slow cooker function on here. This is going to cook for seven to eight hours on low. So this means you can put it all in here when before you go to bed and just let it cook overnight or you can do what I'm doing which is making this early in the morning and then having it ready later in the day for when I get home or whatever and then I can put them into separate containers and then have them for breakfast so let's put this in turn it on and we'll see what happens in about eight hours when the oatmeal comes out, you can divide it into six different containers. Now to heat it up, I just put it in the microwave for about a minute at a time until it was fully heated. And this actually looks pretty good liquid wise, but I added a little bit of milk for some extra creaminess that seemed to really help. And then I added a little bit of brown sugar to it and mix it all together. Now I like adding fruit to my oatmeal, so you could add uh, sliced bananas like I did, or maybe even some diced apples. Now here's the nutrition info, and I spent 60 cents total, like on, on the ingredients for the recipe, which means it was like only 10 cents per serving. Baked oatmeal is also really easy. I use rolled oats instead of the steel cut because I feel like the rolled oats bake better for me. So here are the ingredients for it. It's so basic. You just take some oats and put them into a bowl and then you add the other dry ingredients. So for me, it was, I believe a bit of baking powder and then some cinnamon and some salt. And then I used sugar. You could use honey or maple syrup, but to be honest, I'm out of it right now. So the sugar works just fine. And in a separate bowl, I added two eggs and then I added the rest of the wet ingredients like milk. I think I added a little bit of milk afterward as well. Uh, and then some vanilla. And then I actually added some peanut butter to this. This will help give it some extra healthy fats. After mixing that together, I poured it into the dry mixture and mixed that all together. It was not as liquid as I wanted it to be, so I added probably about a, a, an extra half cup of milk or so, and that made it a whole lot better. And I sprayed a casserole dish with cooking spray. I poured it all in, evened it out, and I put it in the oven for about 40 minutes. When it is all done, it should be completely like spongy, kind of like a cake. When you put a knife in, it should be clean. I'm gonna include the nutrition info right here as well. And total cost for these baked oats is $1, seriously and six servings, that would make it about 16 cents per serving. When it cools off, you can separate them, divide them into different containers. Mine, I can fit three per container. And side ideas to go with it, I would definitely recommend a protein like cottage cheese or eggs or Greek yogurt or something, and even a side of fruit as well. So today I made two dinners and two breakfasts for you. Now you do not have to make all of that in the same day. I totally didn't because I just don't have the time or patience for that. You can break it up into a couple of days or you can just 
plan on making one of them for the entire week. It doesn't matter how much or how little meal prep you do, as long as you get it done. So leave me a comment and tell me what is one of your favorite things to make with ground beef. Maybe either just a meal prep dish or something that you like to make for dinner. If you have any other suggestions on meal prep ideas, let me know in the comments and I will see if I can make that happen. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and do so right now and like this video and ring that bell so you'll be notified when more of these videos come out, as well as my other grocery hauls, recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later. Did you know I offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching? Whether your goal is to lose weight, eat healthier, or just want to know how to get started, I can help. You can schedule a free weight loss discovery call by using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to chat with you.